I've been making this Victorian building for weeks, but I couldn't get a good photo of it. This naked track and bright green baseboard just looked awful. So I decided to spend a week turning it into this. Welcome to Chandwell. My name's Michael and I've added ballast, painted and weathered the track, added point motors and drainage hatches, line side cabinets, a pile of discarded sleepers, weeds, bushes, and even a couple of delicate speed restriction signs. I think it looks a lot better, so let's see how all this came together in Trackside Trappings, finishing my station throat. Adding ballast requires a lot of watery glue. Whilst the baseboard is painted plywood, the disused spur is just one millimetre thick card. I didn't want it to warp whilst wet, so I applied a generous coat of gloss enamel varnish to hopefully seal it. You can read so many different opinions on what colour track is. For me, it's a dark reddy blacky brown. I have a pot of just this colour sitting around from a bit of decorating years ago. It's just a tester pot of emulsion wall paint, but it's done me well on the rest of my layout. I apply it to the rails and sleepers with a small brush. All the detail will come later, so this is quite basic. Because it's not proper model paint, it never fully sticks to the metal, but I can still take care to wipe off the tops of the rails before it dries. I'll just use a bit of old cardboard box for this. So where is this spur going to go? It was obviously once part of a branch line going away from the station on the right. Too far towards the wall will look a bit daft, but too big a gap means I wouldn't be able to fit a loco into it. About here will do. I chop the track with track cutters, and then test it with my ancient class 08. If it runs, anything will. I eventually stick the track down with a bit of oohoo and add some weights. These Pico buffers have been around for decades. I bought these ones at the Bradford Show this year. Once stuck together, I painted them the same brown as the track. I gave a final dry brush with lighter shades. These don't look too bad, do they? I bought these drainage items from Scale Model Scenery. They're a set of fine manhole covers and the frames for them to fit into. They are very delicate. They're simple to cut from the sprue on the layout, they are quite low down compared to the overscale depth of the plastic track sleepers. So I glued them to the baseboard on top of a tiny bit of 1mm thick card. The tops are painted black and then dry brushed with a rusty brown colour. I dropped these into place right at the end. I bought these brass point motors from N Brass Locos over three years ago. They look simple enough to make. Just cut them from the sprue and fold them in four. They are basic, but they do add a nice bit of interest. Just like the manholes, they are a bit thin, but that's not a problem. I used super glue to stick them to the baseboard on top of a slice of 1mm card. I undercoated them with grey paint, and then applied a wash of darker grey to accentuate the depth. I applied a final dry brushing of light grey to bring out the edge detail. My friend Tim gave me these 3D printed cabinets last year and I was keen to use them. I glued them to the baseboard and painted them grey. A wash of dark grey brought out the detail. A final highlight dry brushing has made them look passable. Thank you for sending me these last year Tim, much appreciated. So with the cabinets, point motors and manhole surrounds in place, it's time for the universally hated job of ballasting. Those of a nervous disposition, please look away now. There are 22 points on Chandwell, and I should be showing you how to carefully apply ballast to reduce the chances of destroying these expensive things. But my approach to ballasting is just slap it on. I pour the ballast all over, directly from the tub. I slosh it around by hand, and then use a very soft brush to gently spread it around to where I want it to be. Once it's all in position, I give it a soaking with a spray. This Aussie Miracle hair conditioner bottle is perfect. It has an incredibly fine spray. Filled with water and a drop of washing up liquid to reduce that surface tension, I give the entire track bed a good soaking. This settles the ballast down and ensures it doesn't clump when I add the glue. Everything on Chandwell is very well varnished, but I still dry off the platforms and viaduct with a bit of kitchen roll, just in case. This is Dirty Gloop. It's a 50-50 water and PVA glue mix 
with a drop of washing up liquid and the dregs from many old pots of brown paint. I use a pipette and dribble this gloop everywhere, even the points. I find a bit of to and fro is enough to keep the mechanisms from jamming. I do this four or five times over the course of the next few hours. I do recommend you take more care with your own track, I might just be lucky here. The next day I added a generous squirt of black paint into the dirty gloop and I thoroughly soaked the track for a second time. When this dries, the ballast has a lovely depth and definition to it. Straight after soaking the ballast, I sprinkle on weeds. Small ones at first, and then some bigger ones. I soak these in the same dirty glue. This beds them down and takes the bright colour edge off. I'll build them up in this way two or three more times. I bought these laser cut sleepers from Scale Model Scenery. The detail on them is lovely. I cut a few from the sprue and stacked them and scattered them and painted them. Lovely. I used various black and brown paints to very lightly dry brush the ballast. This lets me build up the look of grime and oil. I used more brown on the viaduct but more black down here near the station. Some parts are completely black to represent where locos may have stood and dripped oil. I clean the top of the track between dry brushing sessions. It's starting to look good, but I'll probably tweak this lots over the coming weeks. Moment of truth. If my 30 plus year old shunter can negotiate these points, then everything will. I scrape the insides of the point blades with a cocktail stick to remove gluey ballasty residue and then just go for it. Hmm, this one's not quite right. I'll give it another scrape. And there we go. Another scale model scene repurchase. Laser cut speed signs. I really wanted a 15 to match the Bradford interchange, but I had to choose between 10 and 20. Since Chandwell is on a tight curve, I went for the 10. These are unbelievably fine. The numerals are only 2.5mm tall, and the post is about half a millimetre wide. It's easy enough to paint with a small brush. I used a 0.6mm drill to put a hole in the baseboard, and then tried to drop it into a little blob of glue. Bigger hole. <laughs> Gonna need a bigger hole. Gonna need a bigger hole. <laughs> In the end, a 0.8mm hole got me where I needed to be. I think the scene looks wonderful. I am more than happy with how it's turned out. Welcome to new members Max and Curly Paws, who joined my channel as a tour guide and as a business owner. Thank you both for joining. I hope you're enjoying the behind the scenes videos and the updates. If you are interested in seeing weekly member only updates, please consider joining my channel. You can use this button here. Here's a look back when I did the first bit of ballasting on the viaduct. I'll be finishing the poor law building next, and then an agonizing decision. Do I finish Market Street or do I do the signal box? Thanks for watching, stay safe, and I'll see you next time.